So if you're just getting to know the Tampa Bay area and you want to know about the beaches here in Tampa Bay, this is the video for you. In fact, this is the video that I wish I had had when I was just getting to know the Tampa Bay area and finding my way around. For me, the beach was priority number one, and that is why I want to make this video for you so that you know everything you need to know, you know your way around, you understand what you're looking at on the map, and you feel like you're equipped to navigate the beaches here in Tampa Bay. So, if you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe, like this video. If you have questions, just let us know in the comments, type your question in, we'll get back to you as quick as we can but this video is for you. Now, in a second, I'm gonna shrink my screen down, my, my camera down so you can look at the map, and we're gonna walk together through the beaches of Tampa Bay so that you know how to book your trip, plan a move, find an investment property, whatever you're looking to do. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it right now. Ready? Okay, so we've got good old faithful Google Maps pulled up right here, okay? And we're gonna click our way through this just like you would just like we would if you were my brother and I was trying to show you around so you could plan out a trip, okay? So let's start off with the central landmark, right? So here's the city of Tampa. In fact, just to help orient you, I'm gonna zoom all the way out so you can see where Tampa is within the entire state of Florida, okay? One of the beautiful things is that you've got Tampa close to Orlando, about an hour and a half drive, and then you've got the cities of Clearwater and St. Pete. Okay, so you've got a lot of options as far as cities, but as we zoom into Tampa, right, this is what most people think as far as Tampa proper, but the beaches are over on this side, and depending on which beach you're headed to, you're looking at about a 30 minute to maybe a 45 minute drive to get you to beautiful, warm, crystal clear blue waters and white sand beaches, palm trees, sun sign, world class sunsets. All of my favorite things in the world are just 30 minutes away from the airport over here. So let's take a look at what the options are so you can get to know a little bit about the, the, the unique character of each of these different beaches so that as you're planning a trip or considering a move or a second house, whatever you're looking to do, you can find the right spots for you, okay? So if you're flying in, you're going to be coming into the airport right about here. And then you've got these three bridges that take you across the bay, okay? This top bridge over here takes you straight out to Clearwater. This is a beautiful drive, by the way. This bridge is one of my favorites. And believe it or not, there's even little beaches right along the, right along the bridge over here. Now, the water of the bay is not as beautiful as the water of the beach. Probably not surprising to hear that, but if you didn't know, now you know okay but you can have a nice little a nice little beach session over here if you don't care about the water visibility or the blue you know the blue of the water okay now taking this bridge all the way across to clearwater clearwater is what most people think of when they think about the beaches near tampa you're probably thinking of clearwater or you're thinking about saint pete beach Clearwater is consistently named one of the top beaches in the world. Um, in fact, recently it was named one of the top places to retire in the world as well. Because Clearwater is known for its, its just pristine, exquisite, beautiful water, the best white sand beaches in the world, and it's got a booming tourist industry as well, okay? So when you think about Clearwater, let's zoom in a little bit and give you some more specific references there. You're really talking about, most people are thinking about this area over here across this intracoastal waterway. Most people are thinking about clear water here, okay? And this area right across the bridge is going to be the most action oriented. You can see a little, uh, a couple of little shots here just from Google Maps, okay? So you can get a, an idea of what we're talking about. It's like the Caribbean here in Florida, okay? You've got high-rise hotels, you've got all kinds of good things going on, you've got aquariums. All the tourist stuff that you could wanna do is all right there. Now, it doesn't mean that it's all tourists, it just means it's a fast-paced uh, setting for the beach, okay? Now, um, and maybe fast-paced isn't the only way to describe it, but when you look at it here, you've got wide beaches, blue water, and and crystal clear visibility, which is a big thing to me as someone who likes to go under the water and look around, I'm all about the visibility, okay? And don't forget, the water is actually warm, so you can spend a lot of time in it. 
and the waves are small. So you don't have to worry about getting, you know, beaten up by the surf, right? Whether you're, you know, you've got little kids and that's a concern for you. The water is like, it's like a bathtub. And most of the time uh, for all of these beaches, when you're in the water, you will be able to see your feet very, very easily. So you know what's going on down below you. And I know that's a big deal for a lot of people. So, you know, there's days where the water is moving around and, and it's different. You know, obviously if there's a storm coming through or something like that, not every day is like a pool or a bathtub, but most of the time that's what we're talking about. And that's what really draws the crowd around here. Okay. So Clearwater Beach is, is amazing. Um, and if you start to get a little further up north towards Caladesi, it's a much more calm environment, right? But you've got to get across the bridge, drive up, and this state park is, is really just absolutely beautiful, scenic, lots of nature to enjoy right over here, okay? So let's work our way south as we go through this, okay? Down here from Clearwater, the next beach and and two things to understand right so this is clearwater beach and this is the area of clearwater okay so you see this red outline clearwater itself could be a big area but clearwater beach is right over here and it even goes across a little further down from this inlet and then the next beach down is bel air bel air beach okay bel air beach is known for like the fresh prince of bel air big old houses right uh, it's a very luxurious part of town, and it's mostly private beaches that are assigned to residences. And then, you know, all across this beachfront is, um, you know, just beautiful, luxurious homes. Okay, so if you're looking for that, that is where you will find it, right? Now, what you won't find there are homes that you can use for vacation rentals, uh, unless you're looking for a longer stay, right? So they have a a typically a longer minimum uh, stay period that you you have to you have to put onto the property whether you're renting it for yourself or renting it out to somebody this part of town has some of the more restrictive uh rental policies as does clearwater okay so if you are you know factoring that into your decision it might be a good idea to chat with an expert agent to help figure out what are the specific rental policies that could guide your decision okay but Bel Air, it's the same water, it's the same beaches, it's an amazing place. So, um, you know, if you're looking at Bel Air as an option, this is really the area that you're talking about, okay? All right, now, below Bel Air, we've got Indian Rocks Beach. And this is one of my personal favorites. This is one of the beaches that we go to most often because it's a, it's a hidden gem. Not, it's not as well known on the name recognition, but Indian Rocks and Indian Shores are great places for anyone that's looking for a second home that they might want to also use as a rental or people that are looking for, um, you know, just a vacation home, right? An investment property. Those areas tend to have more, more flexible minimum stay requirements when it comes to rentals and the beaches are amazing. And the, the pace of the beach life there is not quite as slow as Bel Air, not quite as fast paced as Clearwater and St. Pete, somewhere in the middle. So typically when you go to a beach, it's not crazy crowded. Uh, you've got a lot more space to, to move yourself around and, and you know pick the, pick the spot that you want. So um, Indian Rocks and Indian Shores beaches are two of our favorites. They've got great restaurants all the way through. We absolutely love it. And then as you move further south down into Reddington, right? So let's let's give you a couple of little visuals here. As you're looking at Reddington, it's um, you know you're starting to get more condos and um, and less of the crazy tourist crowd. Um, Reddington's got a beautiful established history, beautiful beaches, and it has some really nice public beaches and some very nice parks and playgrounds that are close to the beaches as well. Okay. Um, and then below Reddington, you've got Madeira Beach, which Madeira Beach has almost a little like boardwalk area, this John's Pass area, uh, which again is going to be like a smaller version of many of the tourist attractions that you'd find in Clearwater. Um, so if you're looking for shops, like, um, you know, vacation shops and things that, like if you're visiting a town and you want souvenirs and things like that, you'll find those at John's Pass. 
uh, you'll find rentals and charters and you know jet skis and all those things because you've got a nice inlet right here at John's Pass as well, right? So Madeira Beach has a lot of that. Um, it's 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 going to be in the same category as Clearwater, Reddington, and some of the places that have a longer minimum stay for a rental <laughs> for a rental property. Okay, um, and then from there you've got Madeira Beach, Treasure Island. St. Pete Beach, which St. Pete is known as one of the best places to go visit. It's also a phenomenal place to live, not to be confused with the city of St. Petersburg. This is St. Pete Beach. And then below that, you've got Passa Grill, which a lot of people around here will call the Caribbean of the Tampa Bay beaches. And it's beautiful, calm blue waters, and it's a very bohemian atmosphere, lots of arts and culture and all of those things, very, very relaxed atmosphere um, that you'll find right there in Pass Grill, okay? So there's something for everybody, right? As you're getting to know the area, if there's something that you're looking for, a good agent, a good friend in the area can help gear, can help guide you towards the right beach for you. Um, and can help you make sense of a stay that you're looking for or a move or a potential second home. So feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Myself and our team, we're happy to help guide you through this. You know, as local realtors, this is one of our favorite things to do. This is one of the things that drew me to the area was really helping people make the most of this decision because it's not just a great place to live. It's a great place to have a second home, vacation home, rental property. All of those things are available to you. Now, there's a lot of nuance to it, right? You wanna learn flood zones and elevation and insurance and all those things factor in. So let's think all that stuff through if you're considering a life down here, but it's a phenomenal place to live and work and it's no wonder why thousands and thousands of people are flocking down to this area. The secret is out, but it's still, the getting is still good. So you'll love the area. Um, if you have specific questions, put them in the comments or reach out. We can schedule a call. Um, but hopefully this has been helpful for you as you're just getting to know the area a little bit. Uh, all of these beaches are incredible. You'll have an amazing time in all of them. And as you find the right ones that feel like, like yours, there's something for everyone here in the beaches in Tampa Bay. So we've talked about the Gulf Beaches, one of my favorite of the seven distinct regions here in the Tampa Bay area. And if you've never been down here, you gotta check it out. You gotta put your toes in the warm, clear waters. You gotta walk through the white sand beaches. You gotta watch the sun sink into the ocean late in the evening with the sky turning pink and purple and blue. It's magnificent. You gotta experience it. And if you have any more questions about any of the things that we've talked about today or anything related to it, just put your questions in the comments. Let us know what you thought of the video. If there's anything else that you'd like to know, we'll include it in future videos. Remember, we're gonna be covering each of these beach towns in their own video in future videos coming soon. So stay tuned, you're not gonna to wanna to miss it. And if you've thought about making a move to the area, you should really keep thinking about it, okay? Reach out to us. We've got an amazing team of real estate agents standing by, ready to help, ready to help you think through the options and come up with a plan that you can pull the trigger on whenever you'd like to. So thanks again and we'll see you soon.